And good evening, Commanders. It's good to see you again. It's Thursday. It's Elite Dangerous Law Tour Extended um, Thing Night. <laughs> Uh, you know what it's all about. You know, you know what it's all about. You know what it's all about. It's going to be fun. We're going to be fun. We are um, in the Ridquat system. We are in the Ridquat. We are in the Ridquat system. Now, this is a um, um, notorious anarchy system in the original game of Elite. So, a little bit more about Ridquat and why we're here later on. But welcome, one. Welcome all. We are today going to be setting off uh, on a six-week extended. Uh, expedition to the Formidine Rift, well, through the Formidine Rift, um, uh, with the ultimate aim of getting to the Zuara megaship, which is the first ever megaship in Elite Dangerous, um, to complete the the tour of the law that we've been running since the beginning of April. So lovely to see so many of you in the chat. Thank you very much for turning up. It's been good fun. It's been good fun. Um, I've assembled the wings, so we're going to see. We're going to do the instancing thing and see if we can crash Frontier servers for them. <laughs> Um, later on, because today is sort of prep, okay? We're sort of going to launch today. We don't actually have to go anywhere today, um, but um, yeah, we're going to kind of a uh, bit of a shakedown, make sure everybody's ship is ready and good to go, okay? That's going to kind of be the purpose of this evening. So if you don't know where we are, uh, we are in the Ridquat system. Let me show you which is the right screen and uh, that one. Um, I'm in Marshall Dock. Uh, which is one of the which is one of the space stations here in the Ridquat system. I think it's the third one out. So um, that's where I am currently located. And um, I've uh, I've assembled a wing. So actually, um, joining me this evening are are my son. Um, so Commander White Wyvern there, you can see on the left hand side is actually my youngest son Josh, he's joining us on the expedition this time, so his first, well he actually was on Distant Worlds as well, but got, um, got, got, got stuck on the way, so <laughs> welcome Josh. Um, Commander Bograt is with me this evening, now Commander Bograt I happen to know is, uh, is, is also a good friend of mine, doesn't live too far away from me in Kent, so um, first time he's been in my wing as well, so welcome to Commander Bograt. And Dante Blaze um, just got in at the right time, so... <laughs> I got, I got the friend notification there, uh, and that was really, really good. So fantastic to see you as well, Dante Blaze. Thank you for dropping in. I see you are outside the space station right now, so I will um, uh, I will get in there as well. So, and welcome to everybody on the chat as well. Fantastic to see you all. Thank you very much. That's really, really good. Um, and we will get on get on the way. Now, where why are we in the Ridquat system? Okay, why are we in the Ridquat system? Um, we are here because this is the place from which the Formidine Rift quest starts. So for those of you who have read my um, my book, uh, that was my first Elite book, Elite Reclamation, there's a clue in the book that basically says, take a line from uh, Real to Ridquat and um, uh, line that up and if you put, where is, where, where is Real? Um, there's far too many things going on here. I need that, I need that lighty thing switched off. What's that showing anyway? Um, <laughs> uh, where is Ridquat? It's not very... There's, there's, well, there's Ridquat. Where is Riot? Uh, there it is. Right. Okay. So line these two up. Okay. Line these two up. And in the distance, uh, you will see um, the galaxy spreading out. Now, far, far, far away there. You might just be able to see it as the Cyrady sector. Now, that's where we're going to ultimately end up. Okay, that's when we're going to ultimately end up. But if, um, before all this fancy stuff that you could get on the galaxy map, if you lined Riot up with Widcrat, it led out across the galaxy uh, to to a strange, well, potentially strange uh, location in the galaxy, out there somewhere. Now, you see, I've got a few bookmarks, so I know where I'm going. But back in the day, we didn't have bookmarks. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a uh, that's the thing. Now the expedition is six weeks. It's not going to be too taxing, okay? It's not like Distant Worlds. <laughs> it's certainly not going to be as well organised as Distant Worlds either. So you're going to kind of a little be on your own a little bit for this trip. But it's it's going to be it's going to be a reasonable way. We are ultimately heading out to this point here, uh, Cyredi JF. A JX dash F C zero, okay, which is the location of the Zawara megaship, which was discovered some time ago now, about three years ago, way out in deep space, and it's a it's a reasonable check trek, okay. So we're going to be going all the way out here, and uh, deep in the Formidine Rift, as you can see. Um, it is twelve thousand light years away from where we currently are. That's that's the distance we're going to be travelling uh, over that period of six weeks. So not outrageously bad, particularly not for the ships nowadays. Now, when um, this was originally 
um, set up as part of the elite, one of the Elite Dangerous Mysteries, uh, this area of space was much harder to travel because we didn't have Guardian frameshift boosters or engineering back then. We had to do it with the best ships we can. So Cobras and Asps were... Um, and anacondas really were the, were the chosen vessels for explorers back then um, and now pretty much any ship as long as it's reasonably lightweight can kind of do this um, and along the way we're going to be exploring some of the um, the various bits and pieces so in the book in the book where's it gone there it is in the book there's the clue that basically says there's something weird going on out there um, and you need to head out and the other clue that was given is um that um, you, need, you need to take your heart and your soul along with you. And of course, there is a heart and soul nebula, which basically marks the entrance, or at least in my head, it marks the entrance to the Formidine Rift itself. Now, actually on the galaxy map, you can see the Formidine Rift is this big chunky area here. Um, and we actually have to cross through another sector here, which the name of it forgets me. I'll find out. Let me go and have a look on the codex because it's slightly easier to see over there. Uh, it is this one. So we are, we're currently here, we will be traversing um, the Elysian Shore, okay, so we've got to go all the way through the Elysian Shore, um, through to the Formidine Rift to, to arrive at the Zuara. Now, very, uh, back in the day, the Elysian Shore was quite easy to navigate, okay, um, until you got to the... Uh, until you got to the Heart and Soul Nebula, okay? Because the, the Heart and Soul Nebula sort of marks the point. You can see it on the galaxy map here. Um, it's around this sort of point here, if we, we zoom in. Uh, let's go down there. There we are. Around where the Heart and Soul Nebula is, you can see the galaxy arm there. It's quite thick. Loads of stars, okay? Loads of stars there. Um, beyond that point, space starts to thin out. The stars thin out, and exactly as described in the book. Um, you know, the stars thin out, the galaxy is, is faint in the distance, okay? Beyond this point, navigation begins to get harder and harder and harder. Depending on your ship, um, uh, you may not be able to go directly from the Heart and Soul Nebula to the, the final destination where the Zuara is. You may have to take a detour. Now, I've plumbed this into the route map that we're going to take, okay? So we're going to head fairly much straightforwardly out there. Now, our initial destination actually is this... Um, um, place here S171-18 <laughs> which is a very exciting name but it's actually quite nice eye candy for you on your route so it's the sort of first way mark it's slightly off course actually but because it's there um, it's very pretty and we're going to head there first so that's going to be our destination and that's where we're going to rendezvous next week okay so rendezvousing tonight in the Ridquat system which is where we're going to start we're going to rendezvous at S171-18 uh, next week and then we can go on to this. You can take it at your own pace. You can charge off um, at full maximum speed if you wish. <laughs> Somebody, as you can see, is already there. Um, um, or you can just take your time and you know mosey on around and, and do other things and, and various other bits and pieces. So that's the, the destination will ultimately be here in about six weeks' time. So it's a very gentle expedition. Okay. So if you're new to exploration, this is a good chance to um, you know try out your ship and give that kind of stuff a whirl. If you're not, you know you know exactly what the score is. Just end up at the waypoints, and then we'll we'll meet up at the waypoints and explore some of the places that are there and have a look around and stuff. And it's a good chance to pick up some exploration data and other bits and pieces. Okay. So that's going to be good. Now in the Ridquat system tonight. I noticed earlier on there were three fleet carriers, but now <laughs> they're like a rash, aren't they? They appear everywhere. Um, so, you know, loads of fleet carriers. So for, for those of you, um, I'm not sure how many of these fleet carriers are actually going on this expedition, but I know some of them are. OK, so if you um, I'm, and I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping to grab a lift back on one of them. <laughs> So I'm hoping that one will appear in the Cyrene sector ultimately, and then I can hit your lift back. Which would be a bit lazy, but it would be quite cool. Um, so um, there, there we, let's just have a quick look through here. We have the Zero Gravitas, which, which is quite good. Um, the GSV Guru Meditation. Uh, Code Crashes Folly. Uh, Rapscallion. That's a nice one. I like that. Uh, the Absolution. Mm, bit deep. I like that. Uh, Tanny Lawn, which is oh another Michael Moorcock reference. Okay, so that's good. Um, the CRV Nightwish. Oh, I like that. Is that... Hmm, Nightwish. That's that's a that's a nice name. I like that. Um, oh, and I'm always welcome aboard the Nightwish. Excellent. Okay, fantastic. Um, the FNS Agamemnon. I like the Greek. Yes, very good. The Dark Wheel. Ooh, the Dark Wheel itself is here. <laughs> Coming along on our expedition. Awesome stuff. Um, and <laughs> Wimbledon Common. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, that's awesome. So the Wombles are here as well. Fantastic. <laughs> Some of the names are fantastic for these things. Um, but there we go. Never mind. Yeah, so Ridquat. Ridquat is not a nice system, actually. Ridquat is an anarchy system. It's notorious in the original game of Elite for being a place that you didn't go to until you had such, you know, a massive... Um, um, yeah, a massive um, yeah, amount of guns and shields and stuff on your ship. Uh, it's a really, really dangerous system. Um, but uh, but there we go. So um, for tonight, what I thought we would do is I just wanted to run through. Some of you will be completely familiar with this. Some of you won't. Um, but let's let's do a bit of a shakedown cruise of our ships. OK, so all the things that you want to take with you on an exploration voyage. Um, and I can also introduce you to my ship as well, because I'm not I've, I've I've parked my Cobra. OK, the Cobra that I was using for the earlier part of the law tour, which is um, um, the Robert Holstock. I've, I've parked it up. I've I've. <laughs> I've retired it temporarily and I've switched to my other ship, which is a crate phantom, which I tend to use for exploration. OK, um, and this one is called Kahina's Quest. Hey, it's obvious, obviously, with the uh, the extended law tour in mind, Kahina's Quest. So uh, that's what we're going. That's what the ship is called. And I'm just now going to rendezvous with you all outside the space station. So if you're in my instance, fingers crossed, it will all hold together uh, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's get my ship up, 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 up. up. A little bit of sound there, so I can hear what's going on. There we go. I can see loads of people in the instance, which is always good news. Hopefully, my wingmates are around as well. There we go. So I've got to be a bit careful. I'm, I'm used to my Cobra being all A-rated and 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 set up because it's a sort of multi-purpose ship, um, um, whereas this uh, Crate Phantom is not. <laughs> It's optimised completely for jump range, um, and that means it's it's a tiny bit sluggish because uh, it's like super lightweight uh, and so on and so forth. So there's loads of ships out here. This is fantastic. So and they've all got all sorts of bits and pieces going on. So oh, I'm getting a little warning there to get out of dodge of the, um, the ship. So Commander Dante Blaze in my wing there. That's good. So um, I have launched now. Let's see if I can assemble the rest of my wing in a moment. So let me just flip over. Uh, it's always nice to see um, um, all the other commanders here. So there's lots of lots of ships about. There we go. Let's get the space station in front, and we can um, we can have a look at that. And I'll switch to the external view. There we go. So this is my this is my this is my crate phantom. This is my ship that went to um, distant worlds. So I'm rather fond of it. Uh, it's been to Beagle Point and all the way back. It's been out to the former Dun Rift before. It's been over to a place actually that was named um, by by some of the um, some of the elite players after me, which was really kind. So there's an un it's, it's unofficial. It's not officially put on the Elite Dangerous map, but it's unofficially called Wagar's Reach, which is a long, long way away over on the sort of left um, part of the galaxy. So if you've ever been out there, I've been out there once or twice as myself on some of my exploration ships. So it's quite a well-travelled ship, but it's all sort of fitted out. Okay, so. Um, um, that's 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 my crate. It's 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 a good ship, the crate Phantom. I really like it. It's um, and I've got a normal crate, a crate Mark II for kind of general duties as well, because I think it's probably one of the best ships in the game at the moment. Um, the fact that you've got all that capability and a medium pad, which I think is really really good. Uh, but I like the Phantom for exploration. Now, what have I got on board? Okay, what have I got on board? Uh, let's go back in the ship for a moment. Uh, I've forgotten how to do that. There we go. Uh, so my setup, and this may not be the best exploration setup, but it's it, it certainly works for me. Um, this is what I've got on board. Okay, so I have got first, most importantly, um, I have got the best frame shift drive I can get. Okay, five A. It's the biggest thing you can fit in this ship. That's that's important. You want to be able to jump as far as possible. Uh, it's a crate ship. It is indeed. <laughs> um, so um, I have got a um, uh, an optimized shield generator just really to, to, to take it bumps. You don't really need shields for an exploration ship, but it gives you a, you know just in case you have a slight pancake landing, it gives you um, you know gives you that extra a bit of freedom. I went and did the Guardian unlock. Uh, my son also came, well we did his Guardian unlock the other week, so um, we've got access to the Guardian frame shift drive boost, and I've got the biggest one I could stick in the ship. That's the five H, which gives me an extra ten years. Uh, 10 years, 10 light years jump range uh, on top of everything else that you can get. And then, of course, um, I've done the um, engineering on this. So this is a level five engineered frame shift drive, uh, da, 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 which gives you the maximum kind of 
um, jump range. Right, so um, my son and Mograt are currently in a different instance. So when we jump around, guys, we'll uh, we'll pick that up. That'll be okay. Um, so and we'll have a look. Um, you need you might need an SRV, so bring a planetary hanger along. Um, you, um, I've still got Super Cruise Assist on it because I quite like it. <laughs> That's me to talk. Um, I have brought along some repair limpets, okay? So if my hull gets busted up, um, I can repair it myself, um, which is quite a good thing. So this ship has been designed to be sort of self-contained as an exploration ship, so it can repair its own hull if it's out in the black. Um, so I've got a small cargo rack in there, which has just got some limpets in it, okay? Don't forget your limpets. I almost did this today. I went out and said, why isn't that working? <laughs> realized I hadn't brought any limpets along so don't forget your limpets okay limpets are really really important uh, and you can repair other folks ships so as we're going in a convoy uh, limpets are really really useful so um, all the usual scientific stuff so detailed surface scanner data link scanner blah 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 discovery scanner all that sort of stuff needs to be on your ship as well um, and the other thing that I always like to have is the auto field maintenance unit now if you're super uh, luxury on this you can have two now I've only got one because it's not like a super long expedition this um, but it's good idea if you can have a have a main um, a, a, a F M U. I can't say that very easily um, and have a secondary one if you've got space um, to repair the other one <laughs> and then you can flip flop between the two uh, and keep the entire thing self-sufficient that gives you a ship that can stay out virtually indefinitely the only thing that you can't fix I think I'm right in saying is the power plant okay so that's the only item on the ship that you can't fix there's no like auxiliary power plant that you can transfer energy to while you're powering things up which seems a slight odd oversight in the design of these ships really so um so amfu does virtually everything apart from the hull and the repair limits allow you to repair the hull so having as close to a self-contained ship uh, as possible or of course nowadays <laughs> since there's going to be a load of fleet carriers coming along with us um, just to stock with one of them and they've got a jump range of 500 light years I believe so um, so yeah so you can repair your own ship so I will I will show you some of this this is this is good sort of warm-up for the exploration okay so we're gonna go and do that so let's let's go somewhere and we'll do some what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to deliberately crash my ship into a star okay <laughs> so I can have some stuff to repair so I can show you how some of these mechanics work because they're, they're all good for exploration so we'll go for the whole exploration thing tonight and then what I want to do is I want to come back here to um, and we're going to go round to Riot okay and then we're going to do hopefully a mass hyperspace jump from Riot to Ridquat and then that sends us off on our trip and then next week we'll rendezvous at a certain place and that's sort of the plan we'll see how it works okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Now, exploration is my favourite thing in the game. Okay, so I'm more familiar with this than probably anything else. Uh, let's go. Good. So um, let's let's go do through all the mechanics um, that you kind of need to do because as you're going on this expedition, big opportunity to earn some exploration money. And you never know, there might be something out there that hasn't got anybody scanned it yet, and you can go and put your own name on it. So you know, fun, right? Uh, that's what Elite's all about. So let's let's make our move. So I am going to head. Let's let's just choose a system. Uh, not too far away, um, and we'll go through. Let's just choose the first one on the list. There we go. So I'm going to go to Crucius Sector JXT B3-3, and I'm going to use that as the system to try out the exploration mechanics. Okay. So if you want to all lock your hyperspace drives onto that. Um, that's where we're going to go. And I'm just going to rotate around very carefully. There it is. So Crucial Sector JX-T B3-3 is where we're going to head. Um, do I have crate jump range? I have very crate jump range. My I have great expectations of my crate. So my jump range is currently... Uh, where is it? It's on the ship menu. There it is there. Um, my jump range is currently 61.3 light years, unladen is 66, which is not bad. Okay, I can go a little bit more, um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's enough, okay? <laughs> um, given all the modules and other stuff that I'm doing. So, right, so um, Crucial Sector JX-TB3-3. Hopefully my wing will be able to um, join me in that case, in that in that location. 
uh, and we'll go through the exploration mechanics, okay? Um, so off we go, off we go, and we'll run through everything you need to know about running an exploration ship, okay? Um, and hyperspace ho, off we go. <laughs> Uh, always good to sort of rehearse these things. I've, I must admit, I tried again this afternoon just to refresh myself. It's amazing how much stuff you forget because it's yeah, it's a complicated game. You know, there's a lot of a uh, lot of stuff going on there. So here we go into the crucial sector. So not too far away. Just a quick jump away from home. Okay. Okay, so you come out of hyperspace. Now I tend to generally throttle back. Now, um, you, what we want to do initially is refuel the ship, okay? Um, so after each jump, just, I mean, it's because it's um, not too far away. <laughs> it's, it's virtually instantaneously refueled. That's the other thing I've done, actually, by the way. Uh, just looking at my uh, modules there. I have brought, because I don't like faffing around at the stars, I have brought, I have filled the, uh, where is it? Um, fuel scoop. I have put the biggest, pretty much the biggest fuel scoop on my ship that I can, a 6A class fuel scoop, which is which is nice and chunky. Um, so it fills up the tanks really fast because I don't like um, hanging around <laughs> waiting for the thing to refuel, which also keeps you away from the sun as well um, because you know there's a danger of overheating. You don't want to overheat because it can damage your ship. Okay. Now the first thing you should really do after you've refueled is engage your um, uh, your D scanner. What's the actual proper name for it? Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Discovery scanner. That's it. There we go. So D scanner. Do a honk. Okay. Do a honk. Okay. That will get you some money. That's the absolute minimum you must do in the system. Okay. Um, do the honk as it used to be called. Now that's used to be all you had to do. <laughs> In fact, that was pretty much all exploration was, other than you would then target each system and go and do a, a local scan of it. Um, with that, that gives you a certain amount of cash because you've discovered the number of systems in the system, okay? That's the absolute minimum you can do, and then you can, if you want to, you can jump on, okay? But if you want to do exploration kind of properly, what you have to do is travel a little bit away from the star, just so it's, you know, A, you're not in danger, and B, you're not, um, um, you know, it's not obscuring your view, okay? Um, so that's the first thing. So do the honk, and it's just literally a case of pulling the, the trigger on that thing, making sure you've got it in a fire group, boom. And it tells you, orbital plane established, there are seven bodies in this system, okay? And then once you're free of that, you can throttle back down. Now you have to throttle down for the next bit, okay? Then you have to go and look in your um, FSS scanner, okay? So we've done, we've moved on from the discovery scanner. Now we're in the, what does FSS stand for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Um, anyway, the FSS, something something system scanner. What is it called? Somebody will say. Um, come on, chat, help me out. Full spectrum scanner, there we go. <laughs> it's not the FFS, no. <laughs> Full spectrum, thank you very much. Right, so this allows you to have a look around the system, okay? Um, and it's basically telling us that there is, there's, you know, we can see here on the, on the, um, uh, on the scan thing at the moment, that I'm kind of moving up and down. Um, that there are there are some systems here. Now, if, if as you scan up and down, you'll notice that there are gas giants at this end. Um, then it moves to uh, water worlds, which are little blue. To me. Actually, I'm, I'm in the way of that bit. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move out of the way. There you go. Water worlds. Um, so gas giants up there. There we go. Gas giants. Uh, water worlds. There's a very narrow gap here for. Uh, ammonia worlds, um, which the Thargoids like, by the way. Um, Earth-like worlds, which are green. I can just that's it. Yeah. that way. You can see that. Um, and then it very quickly moves on to rocky ice worlds, icy bodies, uh, rocky bodies, and high metal content worlds, uh, metal-rich bodies, um, asteroid clusters. And then down here are the small stuff. Okay, so odd signal sources and, and various other bits and uh, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Now, what that means is that if you um, um, see something on the scanner with a with a signature in this sort of zone, 
definitely worth going to see. Now there isn't an earth like an undiscovered earth like world here. Surprise, surprise. Okay, because um, <laughs> we're in the core world. Everything here has been done to death, uh, and there's not much else in this system actually. Um, but what it does mean is that we can, for example, here this the 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 little waveform graphic there implies that the thing hasn't been scanned by us. So what we can do is we can just go up and have a look. Um, it lock on target, and then I can zoom in using my space magical telescope, and it will tell me what it is. It's it's a it's a POI. Okay, nothing very interesting, but it's it's there. Um, and there's another one there. Oh, there we go. Uh, degraded emissions again, um, and there's another one there, etc. etc. So there's loads of these sort of things in there. Then you can lock onto them. Okay, so there's not really much in the way of anything interesting here from a planetary perspective. So actually, I will come back and we'll do this a little bit more in the distance. But that is that is very good. So if you see if you tune if you tune your scanner to um, particularly water worlds, um, ammonia worlds, and earth-like worlds, and you see something there, it's worth going and doing a scan, okay? It's worth going to do a scan because earth-like worlds and things like that get you lots of money, okay? <laughs> so it's definitely worth doing that. Um, so let's, while, while I'm thinking about that, let us go and let's see if I can find a system with a bit more stuff in it for us to scan. So let's go to, let's have a look on the, this is the not the system map. There's nothing very interesting here. Um, let's go to, uh, let's just go to somewhere. Kind of want somewhere not too far away, but let's try that one. So we got system mapping, uh, system information. It's just working out the system map. Okay, so this one's got landable planets and, and some other stuff in it. So this one will probably be a bit more useful to us. So let's let's go there. Uh, I should have clicked on it as a hyperspace marker. Okay, so we're going to go to, where was it? Uh, CD35, 19019. Okay, it's another one jump for me, so it shouldn't be too far for you guys. So just keep, we'll, we'll just jump around to it so I can show you the various bits and pieces that we need to do. So again, engage hyperspace drive. Let's head there uh, to CD-35. 1909. Okay, 1909. Make it so. Engage. <laughs> I'm going to do the Picard menu. There we go. <laughs> CD 35, 1909. There we go. And then we'll go through the full spectrum scanner. The, the FFS. The F FFSS. FS. No, whatever. FSS. That's right. So, again, um, as you jump out, refuel. Do the refueling, um, boom, once you've done the refueling, you have to throttle down to use the FSS. So um, bear that in mind as you pull away from the star, go into the FSS, um, and then I'll do my, actually no, I need to, oh, I've done that wrong. Let me do my honk first, there we go. I like to do the honk first. Oh, FSS, exactly right, there we go. <laughs> um, and then, again, here we can see um, the various different planets. So if I tune it, this, there's obviously an Earth-like world in this system, okay? Um, now, what that allows me to do is, as you can see, this system is populated. Uh, where is the Earth-like system? Uh, should be on this orbital. Oh, look, we've got one of those liners. Uh, I don't know where it actually is. Is it over there? It's interesting. Unless it's obscured by the planet. No, seems to be. Um, never mind. Okay, well, let's go. Oh, they've already been scanned, of course. This is why it's not working for me. I might need to try a different system. <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> um, I'm going to travel on a bit. I need to get to a system which hasn't actually... We can't want one that hasn't isn't inhabited. Um, let me see if I can find one. That's the problem with this part of space, is there isn't much to explore. Um, because of uh, uh, the way this, I definitely have one earlier. So, which one did I use? Right. Okay. Let's, sorry. Let's go back this way. Apologies for this. Let's go here because there is nothing in this system, in terms of civilization. Okay. There's nothing. Um, there's nothing in that system. So I'm going to go back over here. Apologies for this. <laughs> I should have made a list of the stars. Um, Crucial sector DL Y. D164, um, and we'll go there. 
It's a bit of jumping around. It's all it's all good fun. It's making sure the hyperspace drive is working okay. Uh, and this one's a little bit further away, so this is a nice level jump. 41.4 light years. Let's try this again. Um, and of course, depending on your jump range, yeah. See, it's it's all on the it's all <laughs> too much civilization. Here we go. Um, <laughs> let's jump somewhere that hasn't been isn't hasn't been settled. Okay, which means we can explore it using the exploration mechanic. Um, so again, out we come. Refuel. Uh, we get a nice little piece of music there that plays when we reach the end of our calculated jump. Uh, obviously, don't get too close to the star. Um, you can see how fast that fuel scoop is, though. It is, it's like super fast. So um, there we go. Let's jump into that system. Head for CD. Um, where are we again? Crucial sector DL Y D165. Okay, so there we go. People are jumping into the instance now. Slow down. Do the honk. Don't have to slow down for the honk, but I just generally do it in this order. Um, there's. <laughs> There's only two things in this system. I'm not having much luck with this. <laughs> There's only stars in this system. <sighs> Come on, game. Give me a break here. I'm going to find another one. What about that one? It's, an M, it's a red dwarf star. Is that going to be in Tianve? I've been there before. Um, I don't want one of any people in it, which is, of course, a bit difficult. Um, Coal 285 sector, red dwarf star. Let's try that one. I'm going to just jump around a little bit until I find what I need to show you this. So there's a red dwarf star. Let's try that one. So you're going to have to kind of play catch up. Okay. It's the wrong one for exploration. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, am I going to show neutron boosting? No, I'm not going to show some of the more complicated stuff tonight. We will try and do that en route, I think. I think that's going to be fun. Um, Oh, I can filter. Yeah, I can filter that. If this one doesn't work, I will do that. That's a really good suggestion. <laughs> Has anyone mentioned Raxler? Well, we have mentioned Raxler in the past, but um, yeah, we're not talking so much about Raxler. We'll talk about Raxler a little bit when we're on the actual mission. Uh, but let's go through the basics, which is just showing my inability to choose the right systems. <laughs> I thought I was in the right one to start with, but I'm not. But never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll find what we need. Uh, we will find what we need. Okay, so Red Dwarf, which is always a, uh, a, a good place to be. So I'm going to just do the honk quickly. Come on, give me a whole bunch of things to scan. Right, there's 12 orbital bodies. This looks more encouraging. Okay, good, 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 good. Right, so head here. Um, right, I've, I've fuel scoops, get the star behind me, travel away for a little bit. Um, and then, right, okay, so now this is better, all right, this is better. This is what you see when you, you've done the honk um, and there's something in the system, but you're not sure what it is, okay? So you tune your scanner to the frequency and it's telling us that these are icy bodies, okay? So there's nothing particularly exciting, okay? But um, there's, some, there's some stuff in the system, okay? So the honk has identified there are 12 bodies out there, but we've only got two because that's what's in range of our scanners. Um, so what we need to do is we tune it to the frequency and then we have a, a look around with a telescope, and that's telling us that there's something there. Uh, we lock onto it, um, but it's not that one. Maybe it's it's one of those. Okay, so that's going to be a POI. So we don't want to worry about that. Uh, we want one of these. Now it should show us the orbital path. There we go. So there's something over there. What is it? It is a. Uh, oh, there's two of them. There it is. Uh, it is surprise, surprise. A, an icy body. Okay, so that's how the FSS works. Now we just got extra money for doing that. So you get some money for doing the honk with a, with a discovery scanner. You'll also get a little bit of extra money for doing what we just did there. Locating the object and zooming in on it. Okay, so there's another one there um, and we can zoom in on that one too. That's another icy body. These are not particularly interesting systems. Um, and you know, your chances of stumbling along an Earth-like world are quite low in general terms because they're the rarest type of planets and they're therefore the most valuable. And as you can see at the bottom then, our filtered spectral analysis, whatever that means, <laughs> starts to populate itself with what we've discovered. Now, if you have, where we are in the bubble is, is incredibly well um, explored. So we're not gonna find anything new tonight, okay? 
but um, down the bottom there you can see first discovered by Rakamaz and first mapped by Lavish Brunette. <laughs> I quite like that. Um, so um, those are the people who first came by this. Now the, the, the route to the Formidine Rift is also quite well explored so you're almost certainly going to be um, uh, coming across people who have been there before but if you branch out either on the way out or on the way back if you branch up or down or left and right all those kind of things you'll quickly enter areas where there are no first discovered by or no first mapped by okay so we've done the discovery bit okay so you do the discovery scan that gives you a honk of the system the fss then allows you to go and have a look around with this sort of super magical telescope <laughs> which just gazes through space and, and looks at things see there's another there's another couple there um, and it, it has this amazing ability to zoom in from any location and look at whatever the object is. Now these are all fairly boring rocky worlds which is not really a surprise but um, there's another one there so we can keep zooming in. Now each one of these is giving us money okay each one of these is giving us money so it's it's a really um, it also tells us up in the top right there that if you can see the resources that are available on the on the system um, so on the surface of that planet, there's a 23% chance of using sulfur. Now sulfur is quite useful. It's one of the ingredients you can use for FSD boosts and, and injections and all sorts of things like that. So there's, um, when you're looking for a planet, it's quite often worth having a look at that sort of thing because some of those things are actually quite useful for um, boosting your ship. What does that look like? Well, have a look at this. So I haven't really stocked up on this really at the moment, but if you go to the inventory and you go down to, um, no, not inventory, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, FSD injection uh, is the one that you want. So if I click on that on the inventory tab, you can see that um, with a bit of carbon, vanadium and germanium, I can increase the jump range of my ship by 25%, which is a is, which is useful, particularly when you get out into the black and there's some big gaps to um, to cover. Um, if I go across to the standard one you can see with carbon vanadium germanium cadmium and abidium that sounds like that song doesn't it by um frank lira <laughs> with the periodic table of the elements that's very very good uh, that gives me a 50 percent bonus distance okay frame shift projection if i go for premium you can see i've got to add uh yttrium and polonium to that i can do that five times but it doubles my distance okay which means that on my ship 60 light years is suddenly 120 light years okay so I can I can boost my ship's performance should I need to so that's a that's a handy thing and if you're looking for some of these elements the FSS can tell you where they are which is which is pretty handy okay so that's that's good stuff um, now if you've done the FSS then you've mapped all the systems now you can go through the entire if you want to be completely OCD about it you can do everything okay uh, <laughs> um, I usually get bored after a couple of them don't bother um, but um, what you can do is, is map the entire thing and then you'll get effectively get a bonus for doing that um, the other thing that you can do is you can go and scan the actual object itself okay so if we choose one of these let's go back to uh, the system map for this system the third part of discovery now anything with a blue circle basically means you can land on it at the moment um, so we're in orbit around the system let's choose one of these let's go to the closest one it's been mapped by people so there's no real gain to us but we can show you if this was an unmapped system we can show you how to get your name on it which is which is quite cool so I'm going to go to uh, body a1 in this system and show you what that bit looks like as well So off we go. It's not too far away. Um, 230 light seconds. So there we go. And what we'll try and do, so um, we're also going to see if we can land on this planet as well. <laughs> see, see, uh, see what we can, uh, see what we can get. Uh, because we need to check out other bits of exploration. Okay. So you'll notice there on the left hand side it's saying surface scanner is out of range. Okay. So as I come in, I need to reduce speed. Keep an eye on that. Um, because it will eventually probably flicker to too fast and then uh, once I've got to there then I can slow down and start doing the next the th third level of exploration scanning um, yeah so uh, I'm not uh, Dante thank you for the tip I'm not going to use the FS the SC assist at the moment because I find it gets in the way of this bit actually um, so I'm just going to sort of slowly cruise in um, surface scanner still says out of range okay um, now you do have to play around with um, 
um, your key binds because there's quite a lot of these to set up. It takes me a while to get to work the way I like. Uh, right, the planet is coming into visual range now. Um, just being overtaken by a few other commands. So here it comes, okay. And we have to be in exploration mode for this to work. So there's two modes. There's a combat mode, which is useless on my ship because it doesn't have any guns. Uh, and analysis mode, which is where I spend most of my time. Uh, some people reporting some lag on the stream, which I'm not sure. I'm not getting any errors at this end, so apologies for that. Um, we may just have to wait for it to do its thing. Right, now you can see the surface scans turn blue, okay? So that means I'm now in range of the surface scan, so I activate that. So we get a similar UI to what we were just doing, and then what I can do is I can shoot magic probes. <laughs> I don't know quite how these things work, uh, but basically you shoot probes. You can tell over there, it's telling me I've got an efficiency target of six, which I, you can't see, it's over there. Um, I'm in the way. So you basically fire, there you go, there's one. I tend to try and fire one around the back, which is a, nope, we just missed that one about there, and again, about there, didn't do that very well. Uh, and then some off to the sides, and the kind of the pole, and that usually will scan it. Now you can see my percentage scan going up there. Uh, I can see other people, <laughs> loads of people firing probes everywhere. <laughs> um, so with a bit of luck, that 37% will keep jumping up. And when I think it gets over about 90, it jumps to 100%. There we go. Okay. I've now mapped the planet. Now, if that was a world that nobody else had ever seen before, uh, if, if nobody else had ever seen that before, that my name would now be on it. But it's been it's been mapped and discovered by other people. Okay. So, yeah. So, you did really, really well there, Commander SP4H. Uh, my, my aim was rubbish. I don't know how many I fired. About seven, I think. <laughs> um, and that allows us to map the planet. So that if you want to be completely doing everything exploration wise, you honk to get the number of planets. You then use the FSS to go identify where they are and what type they are. And then you fly close to them in order to map them. OK, with these probes. That's that's the full gamut of exploration. OK, um, now what you've got to remember, <laughs> did I probe Uranus? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, it's worth bearing in mind, you don't get your name on the planet until you get back to civilization or nowadays to a fleet carrier. OK, so you have to get back home and sell your exploration data in order to to get that name. So if somebody else has mapped it and you're both racing back to civilization, whoever gets there first gets their name on the planet. So it's slightly competitive. OK. Um, and uh, yeah, you can, if you want to get a, a, a bit more technical, you can um, plug ED Discovery into the thing to upload the results automatically to a, a database, which is all cool stuff as well. So there's a very cool player provided tools for those sort of things as well. So that's that's the exploration mechanic. OK, and that's the exploration mechanic. So honk FSS to get the, the, the star system mapped out and then go and map each individual planet as much as you want to. OK, you don't have to do any of it. You don't have to do all of it. I tend to only map the interesting ones, OK? Uh, if there's something out there that I think, oh, yes, that's quite good. Now, you will find that the former Dine Rift is quite a well-trodden path. So you, if you want to go and get your name on some things, you're going to have to veer off the track a little bit, go up, go down. Um, interesting enough, um, what you tend to find is that most commanders do tend to think in two dimensions. You know that old thing from Star Trek Wrath of Khan where Kirk and Spock have that little conversation about Khan's tactics and they say, well, he's two dimensional thinking. Most of us seem to do that. And if you look at the way we've traveled through the galaxy, we tend to travel on a flat plane from Sol out and back. Um, if you go up and down a few thousand light years, you'll quickly run into systems that nobody's ever seen. And bear in mind that like less than 1% of the galaxy has actually been mapped. There's plenty of stuff out there for you to go and put your name on should you wish to go and do so. So uh, lots of stuff you can do. So that's the exploration mechanic, OK? What about the repairs? OK, now I'm going <laughs> to I've done this many times, but I'm going to deliberately crash my ship into the sun. OK, fastest way to pick up some damage <laughs> uh, and show you how this works. OK, so I'm just going to turn around uh, and head for the moment back to the star, um, which is uh, there. Um, you don't have to do this. OK, this is this is me showing you how you fix damage. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to head back to the star. Uh, the rest of you hang around the star. Don't crash into the star deliberately. OK, um, 
So I'm just going to ram this. This is this feels a bit like Star Trek, actually. You're going to sort of go back in time. Um, we'll see how it works. I don't think we can initiate time travel in Elite Dangerous, but um, <laughs> um, that's yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Oddly enough, there is time travel is mentioned in the law of Elite Dangerous. Um, it's mentioned in the original Elite, saying that if you mess up your hyperspace jump, you could inadvertently uh, filter, uh, you could inadvertently um, initiate time travel. So, um, never seen it happen in any of the games, but who knows, okay? Um, right, so I'm, I'm running in towards the star now. So I'm going to deliberately crash this time and cause myself some damage. Okay, now this won't be too bad, but it can be uh, cumulative, so you don't want to do this sort of thing too many times. And when you're refueling, it's easy to lose concentration, okay? Um, it's quite easy to lose concentration when you're jumping a lot and forget what you're doing and then crash into the star. Or what I tend to do is sometimes if I have YouTube or something on, or Netflix on the other screen, um, I'm looking at that and then I try and use the joystick over here and realize that my focus isn't on the right window. <laughs> <laughs> I crash into the star anyway. Um, so, so I'm going to crash into the star, okay? Maximum warp. This is going to hurt. <laughs> Boom. Emergency stop, okay? Right, so I've taken some damage. I haven't actually taken any damage to the hull by the look of it. Uh, but there I go, I've crashed, okay? So, um, um, so what, what's happened to my ship, okay? Well, let's have a look. Um, module damage. You can see it's not too bad, but some of my modules are at 98%, 99%, 98%, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I've got I've got some damage to my ship, um, uh, which you know at that sort of damage percent isn't isn't too bad. Okay, um, the chances of actually anything malfunctioning is 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 very 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 small. But if those drop to sort of 70, 60, 50 sort of percentages, then you'll start noticing malfunction. Things will stop working every so often, which 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 would not be good. Okay, so I've, I've caused some damage to my ship. Um, now the other thing I can do is if I engage the hyperspace drive, this is the other thing that can happen. Um, let's do frame shift. Uh, and I'm facing the wrong way here at the moment. I can overheat my ship quite easily in this situation because I'm very close to the star. My hyperspace drive is chucking out a lot of heat. You can see my heat is rising. And when my heat gets to a certain point, my ship starts to smoke, <laughs> which I think is quite good. And then when it gets past 100, it sparks and stuff will start to start to jump out. OK, so it's now warning me I'm getting heat damage. OK, so heat, yeah, this is this is something that's an occupational hazard when you're close to a star. Um, and I'm, yes, it's being deliberately mean to my ship. OK, so it's now beginning to cook because of um, you know, the proximity of the star. And if it keeps going up, which it is, you can see it's now 121 percent. Sparks start flying. It's it's you know it's all cool animation. Um, uh, yeah, so you know my ship's in trouble. It's, it's not enjoying this. Okay, so right, so let's get out of here. <laughs> Taking heat damage. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that's that's not good for your ship. So get out of range of the star. Okay. Now, you do have the options to have heat sinks on your ship. I haven't actually got any of mine because um, I tend to be careful enough not to need them. But every so often, a heat sink can be a good addition to your ship. It goes on the utility slot um, and uh, will allow you to cool that down. OK, so that's uh, that's the thing. Now, I haven't actually managed to do any damage to my hull, but I have managed to do damage to my module. So we'll fix the hull. Imagine it. See, some of those have dropped down there. The frame shift drive is now at 94 percent, which isn't great. OK. There's all sorts of damage to this. In fact, look at that. The super cruise assist is down to 68%. Um, so I've done some I've done some damage, but I haven't done any damage to the hull. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop out a frame shift drive and show you the hull repair mechanism. Okay. So throttle back and drop to normal space. And I generally like to be stationary for this. It seems to work better. Um, now in my cargo hold, I have got, um, as you can see here. I've got some limpets, okay? So these are repair limpets in, in my case. Um, so I activate my weapons, not the weapons, but my hard points, switch across to the repair limpets, and then I basically fire one. Um, and boom, it will fly off. Don't know if we can see it. You saw the went there. Um, I'll if I can fire one again. 
Um, it basically drops out. There we go. We might be able to see it on the screen. Not really, no. Okay, it was somewhere there. What it does is it fires out. It connects to your hull and repairs it for you, which is which is very nice. Okay, so repair limpet's really useful for repairing your hull. It's the one thing that the AFMU can't fix. Um, so that's that's a that's a handy thing to have on your ship. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, and it will tell you that the task is complete. My hull's at hundred percent, so at least that's not going to fall apart on me. Okay. Um, um, I should have I should have tried to show what happens when you try and repair the FSD while in Super Cruise. Uh, I haven't tried that. What happens there? <laughs> so I tend to drop to repair. Um, okay, so drop to okay, so try and repair the FSD in Super Cruise and you emergency drop. Them. <laughs> okay, that's quite nasty. Um, right, so um, let me show you the other bit then. Right, so let's go back to the Galaxy map. Uh, not the Galaxy map system map uh, which is here let's go to planet a1 we're going to land this time now I like to be usually down on the ground okay I usually like to be down on the ground when I'm triggering the FMU um, the reason for that is because my ship tends to run quite a um, uh, high power setting um, and I don't like switching off my modules to the various bits and pieces like that so there's yay there's my there's my son's asp um, so who have we got here? We've got um, Commander Bograt. Yay, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Uh, we've got Commander Dante in here, which looks, is that an anaconda? I think that's an anaconda. Yes, that looks like an anaconda. Where's my son? He's flying around. There he is, Commander White Wyvern, who's got the, uh, uh, I think that is the uh, Expo, uh, Expo 17 paint job. So that's cool as well. So let's head to the planet. I'm just gonna be careful I don't ram somebody's ship. And we will. Um, do I need fuel? Not yet. Maybe we. Maybe we'll do fuel here as well. Um, so somebody's waiting for an invite. Is that a, a friend request invite? There we go. Let's do that. There we go. Hopefully that will tie that up. So off we go to planet A one. Yeah, let's put the hard points away. Um, I'll see if we can find something. Uh, see if we can find something distinctive on the surface of the planet to actually um, can land near so that uh, um, <laughs> we can hopefully meet up in the instance and drive around on the surface a little bit as well because that's important too. Um, because one of the things that's quite cool on these expeditions is to rendezvous at a particular location and just sort of scout out and see if we can find any interesting features and see if anybody's you know on the trip has found anything that's worth seeing because occasionally you find planets that are a bit wacky or they've got in interesting cliffs and uh, craters and all sorts of things like that so they can be quite good stuff so planet a1 in this system and i'll show you the next repair thing so that's how you repair the hull using um um uh, i can't give you a wing invite seed because i've got too many people in my wing at the moment so uh, we'll have to see what we can do about that when we get back to um back to back to ridquat or and well sorry we're going to reort actually along that line. Now, um, as we're approaching this planet, now this should be the same for everybody. Uh, let's see if we can find a distinctive marking on it. So there's a round pink spot, um, which is quite distinctive, you know, there. Um, I'm going to aim, um, I'm going to aim for that, okay? And we'll be able to look up the coordinates when we, when we come in. So uh, the center of that that pink spot there is where I'm going to try and aim. And we'll give you the coordinates when we're down and see how many people can join us in that instance. Um, so for the benefit of my wingmen, I will put my wing beacon on. Uh, there we go, so they can find me. So this spot here, it's, it's a, it is actually a crater. So I'm going to aim for as close to the centre of that as I can get. So I'll meet you on the ground there. I'm going to land on a pimple. Yes, I am. Yes, so there's lots of. I know it's not going to be the easiest thing. Uh, it looks like we're heading for minus 27, minus 28, minus 164 at the moment. So that's roughly the coordinates that we're aiming for. So you'll be able to see the coordinates when we get down. So it's not too bad gravity wise. There's a crater inside a crater. So right in the center of that crater, we'll see if we can get down in there. Um, it's looking like minus 30, minus 151 now. 
So that's where we're going to aim, see if we can get down on the surface. Now I always like to land to do my module repairs. Um, it's entirely up to you. You can, of course, do it in space as well. It's not nothing stopping you. I just prefer to do it on the ground. <laughs> it's just me. Um, so we should be dropping in a moment. There we go. Orbital cruise. Into glide. Down we go. It's a nice, very average bowl shape. So we're now at minus 30, minus 146. So that should give you a clue as to uh, where we're going to be. Gravity is 0.19, so nothing really to worry about. Looks pretty smooth down there, so let's drop into this, this very simple bowl-like crater um, and head on down. So yeah, minus 30, minus 145 should put you in about the right space. Um, and then we will drop in onto the ground there. If I can find somewhere flat to land. Doesn't look that smooth down there, actually. This is the other thing to obviously be careful of, is watching your descent. <laughs> uh, so let's see. It's very featureless, actually. Uh, not the most exciting places I could have chosen to land, but there we go. It's nice and easy to, to do that. Okay, so yeah, so minus 30, minus 145 on planet A1. Then hopefully some of you will end up in the same instance as well. I can see a, another freight phantom. There we go, going down. So engage your undercarriage. We'll see if we can meet up on the surface down here. It looks pretty smooth, so it's not a difficult place to land. There's plenty of space as well, so that's quite nice. Uh, I see how close we can all get together. Just need to find a place. Boom! How many got down there? I'm not. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's not, it's not the flattest place, actually. Uh, there we go. I've got a space there. Oh, I hate it when it does that. <laughs> See, that's got up a tiny little bit. I'm gonna, there we go. That looks pretty good. So down we go. Oh, and then it just does that just before you land. It's like, really? I'm going to have to go up again. Come on, stop. There we go. All right, try going down again. Yeah, yeah I'm down. Right, so that's, that's just the landing. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so maybe we'll play around with some of the um, um, instancing to see what we can get. My son is trying to land in front of me as well. He hasn't got his ass down yet. Um, so see how we go. See how we go. See if you can get into the instance with us, if, if, if at all possible. Um, so with the repair, so when you when you're landed, your um, um, thrusters are offline. Okay, so one of the things that takes most of the power on your ship is is off, which is uh, for me quite good because it means I can switch on everything else. What are the coordinates? Okay, the coordinates where we are are minus thirty point eight, minus one four five point five. Okay, and uh, Josh is down. Nicely done, Josh. Well done. <laughs> quite a few other ships um, parking down here as well now so the uh, thrusters are offline so that means I can fire up the auto field maintenance unit now the, the auto field maintenance unit is a bit odd they don't take up any mass on your ship for reasons <laughs> but they consume a massive amount of power okay so they're quite expensive things to run um, so I tend to leave mine switched off most of the time but I'm going to activate it now um, and it'll allow me to switch things on. Okay. Um, now, in order to repair a system, okay, in order to repair a system, that system needs to be offline. Okay. So you'll notice when I repair it, um, it's now being repaired, but the thrusters are offline for the duration of the repair. Okay. So it'll take a moment for that to get up to um, 100%. And I cancel that. There we go, it's working on it. Okay, and you'll notice the auto field maintenance unit is counting down because it uses up units of something, okay, <laughs> to do the repair. So now it's 100%. I can do the same uh, and then it's I can then I can um, leave it inactive. Uh, same with my Guardian Frameship Drive Booster, okay? So that's going to take a little bit of repair time. And notice my field maintenance unit is discharging itself. 
all right and yeah you do need to switch them back on again now uh, most of this is totally harmless okay most of this is totally harmless okay and i need to switch it back on same with the shield generator if i want to repair that shields will go offline while i'm doing this repair so this is why i like to be on the ground because i can't can't bust anything on my ship um and it's able to do a complete repair okay um and then obviously my shields will need to come back on um and and start recharging planetary vehicle hangar again not a problem uh, with that so I'm just going to run through these and fix everything so I like to do this when I'm on the ground simply because it gives me a, a nice feeling for <laughs> being stable okay so that's done um, don't forget if you forget to switch something back on it simply won't work so I've done that before I've switched off my planetary vehicle hanger and wondered why I can't get into my SLV um, so uh, just be aware of that um, on those, all those sort of things I'll just wait for that to repair. You can see my shields are coming back up. I've only got really lightweight shields on this ship anyway. Uh, the absolution will be in orbit in about seven minutes. Okay, one, uh, fantastic. One of the um, one of the uh, fleet carriers is coming. That's awesome as well. Uh, so that's the fuel scoop. Uh, frame shift drive, obviously important. Repair that. And you just get that little spanner um, next to it showing you what, what's actually going on. Uh, and eventually that will fix everything on my ship. So my ship is able to repair itself. Now with the fleet carriers coming along, of course, you can just go there. But if you happen, for whatever reason, not to be in range of a fleet carrier, having this capability on board is really useful for your own ship. So I, I just like to be self-sufficient when I'm uh, when I'm flying around. OK, so we'll fix the cargo hatch now. And you can see my auto field maintenance unit is discharging quite quickly. OK, so it's capable of fixing everything pretty much. But bear in mind that it runs out of whatever it's full of. <laughs> <laughs> magic space dust or something okay um so bear that in mind now there's one you need to be careful of okay and that's the life support because in order to fix it you have to turn the life support off okay now if you turn the life support off for some strange reason in elite dangerous instantly everything in your ship becomes a vacuum <laughs> I don't know why that is, because the, the cockpit should be full of air, you know, so, um, but that's not the way it works in Elite Dangerous. So when I repair the life support, instantly I start to, you know, my, my presumably my Rimlock mask comes down and, um, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm running on borrowed time. You can see here, um, oxygen depleted in seven minutes. OK, so I've got to be a bit careful of this. Um, so once it's immediately refueled, uh, once it's fixed, immediately switch it back on. Don't forget to switch your life support back on. That's really important, OK? <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for you dying because you fixed your life support but didn't remember to switch it back on again because your ship will just self-destruct, OK, and then die. Um, so that's not good. Don't do that. I've done that once. Don't do it again, OK? <laughs> that's really bad. You don't want to die because you forget to turn your life support back on. Um, and basically you just run through all the systems like this so i'm going to do it a bit faster now so i can just i can do simultaneous repairs um so you don't have to do it in order like i was just doing it there um uh, cockpit canopy wasn't damaged now the only one that you can't fix at the moment is the power plant okay so damage to your power plant is unfixable which is a bit annoying because you kind of would like be nice to be able to put a small backup power plant on board to fix the main power plant then you could be entirely 100% self-sufficient, okay? But you can't do that, um, which I, I don't know why. You know, there should be a way around that, you would have thought. Um, and the auto field maintenance unit cannot fix itself, okay? So some commanders will take an extra automated field maintenance unit along in order to fix the other one, and the other one can fix the second one <laughs> in a sort of weird reciprocal sort of way. So, um, so all that can be done, okay? Um, anyway, so that's that's I think all good now. Other than the power plant, I don't know. Does the can the canopy be fixed? Is that fixed by the? Does anybody know if the canopy can be fixed by the limpets? I'm not sure if it is or not. Um, somebody will be able to tell me. So all of those things are all those things are good. Okay. Um, I just and then just make sure everything's switched back on again. Um, otherwise, stuff won't work on your ship. Okay. <laughs> so you can be pretty much self-sufficient uh, as long as it isn't broken uh, okay so if broken it's busted so sellotape <laughs> yeah 
duct tape. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. Actually, there are some ships with what looks like duct tape on the interior. Um, so, so there we go. Anyway, so that's repairing your ship. Okay, so you can repair the hull, you can repair all the modules. That's important as well. What else is there to do on an exploration trip? Well, as you can see, there's some p folks camped outside. Uh, you can get in your SRV now. If there's space on your ship, depending on your build carry two because it's easy to have an accident in an SRV and bust it okay now, if you die in your SRV you'll be returned to your ship but if you um, if you're only carrying one SRV then you're stuck without being able to drive around ever again until you go back to civilization again with fleet carriers now it's far easier just to go back to base and 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 and, and get stuff fixed but if you're not near a fleet carrier or a station it's worth having two generally I find so get yourself two and then you can you know drive around on the surface so um, so you can repair cockpit cracks but not gaps okay so that's fair enough um, uh, and synthesis yes yeah, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about synthesis as well um, so there's things that you can do so if I'm just driving out I'm going to go meet my fellow SRV drivers and crash into the landing strut of my ship oops I'm not a very good SRV driver <laughs> there we go who have we got here um, oh that's my there's my there's my son and, and, and my wing is there. Good Commander Bograt, Commander White Wyvern, Gatente, and some other peoples as well. So there we go, nice view, nice view of all the ships. So you can drive your SRV around to find stuff, okay? So that, that's just quite good. Let's just cover the synthesis thing because here um, you can do various bits and pieces, okay? So in the SRV, I can repair the SRV as well using things that I've collected over time. I can refuel the SRV. Don't quite know how this works because the SRV is supposed to run on hydrogen and yet um, somehow it makes hydrogen out of sulfur and phosphorus. <laughs> this bit of Elite Dangerous makes no sense, okay, <laughs> uh, at all. Um, and if you add arsenic and mercury to it, you get even more. And if you add something called technetum, technet technetium to it, it's 200% it's as good, so I, I've no idea how that's supposed to work. It's magic, it's it's nuclear It's nuclear alchemy. Um, quite how you can refuel your ship, because your ship runs on hydrogen, because you scoop it from stars. Uh, and so does the SRV, because it gets its fuel back from your ship when you dock. But you can, you can somehow do this with sulfur and phosphorus when you're driving around. Um, so don't ask too many questions about that, because I don't... <laughs> That does not make sense, okay? Don't go around and tell it. Uh, te technetium is a real thing, is it? Oh, okay, well, I, I stand corrected on that one. So there we go. Um, so I can repair the SRV by using iron and nickel. So presumably the SRV is made out of iron and nickel. I don't know. Um, but if you add some vanadium and molybdenum, which are, is a real thing, you can you can do things. And there's yeah other things you can do as well. So it's, it's sort of a bit magic. And then you can also rearm your ship with other things as well. Um, so it's useful having loads of materials on board of that um, to to allow you to do that. Okay, it's worthwhile having those sort of things. How do you find those things? Okay, well, follow me. We'll we'll do a little bit of SRVing just to kind of to do these things. So if you're on the surface of a planet, um, and you need to get away from any big objects like ships. Okay, so um, let's head out over here a little bit the other guys can follow me around now you notice on my scanner I'm picking there's some slight variations in what the scanner is showing me okay and if I head in a general direction of a signal it'll slowly start to focus in on something like that um, so there's a there's a bit of a signal over here so we'll just kind of drive in that general direction and see if we can pick anything up it's getting stronger, uh, kind of ahead of us. So hopefully there's something out here. It's a bit RNG, of course, as to whether or not you find anything. Uh, but there's there's, uh, is there, yeah, there's there's a ping on the scanner. So let's just keep driving for a bit. Now at a certain range, your ship will go and um, I kind of lost the signal now. <laughs> it's moved off over there. Uh, let's turn to the right. Uh, a certain range, your ship will decide to wander off on its own. Okay, it'll sort of take itself out of the instance. Um, not really picking up a great deal of stuff here, but um, let's see if we can pick anything up. Just to mind, it's, it's, it depends on the surface of the planet. There's not a great deal here, but let's go that way a little bit, picking up some sort of signals. 
Uh, so be aware that if you drive around for a while, your ship will take off on its own and disappear. Um, oh, I think I'm picking up a an orca up there. <laughs> Let's head over here a little bit, see what we can find. Is there anything actually on the surface of this moon at all? Uh, there's something over there, maybe. This is where it's not going to give me anything at all. That's definitely something I'm hoping. Come on, give me something to fire at. There's usually something on these moons. So this can be a bit frustrating, this bit, because it's, um, you're kind of, uh, that's picking up the ships up there. I don't want that. We spun around there. Nicely done. Let's head this way. Um, see if we can pick up any items on the ground here. Not really picking up a great deal of anything, actually. It's pretty bland. Um, if anybody finds anything, let me know. <laughs> see, you, you can see the two SRVs get picked up um, differently by the scanner. So I quite like this scanner because there is a bit of skill involved in, in chasing around. So if anyone does find anything on the surface, let me know. Uh, and we'll come over there. Ah, they found something. There we go. Oops. Low gravity. Right, over there. There's an object uh, on the scanner. What's oh, been found there? Okay, so right. So a metallic meteorite has been found. Okay. And then what you do is you basically shoot it. Uh, like most things in Leap, there's not much you can do other than shoot it. Um, so basically, with your cannons, you blast it and then it will drop objects. Okay, so there's some vanadium there. And what was the other one there? Uh, there is some. Um, what is it? Tungsten. So basically, you open your cargo scoop and you scoop it up. Very simple, really. And that's the way you can pick up all the items you need for synthesis. And different planets will have different things. Okay. Um, and there's there's quite a few guides on online about what the scanner is actually showing you. I used to know them quite well, but I've <laughs> forgotten most of them now. Um, so, um, but the scanner is pretty useful for finding different bits and pieces. Okay, so that is that is a thing as well. So that's basically how you use the SRV to go gather materials um, for um, doing synthesis. Now, synthesis is very important, both for the SRV if you get stuck um, somewhere, but also for your ship if you need to do various bits and pieces. So you can keep your ship very self-sustained. Uh, which is quite cool. So back to the ship. Let me show you that synthesis time. Where is where are the ships? Oh, they're up there. Right. So see you back at the ship, guys. Last one back at the ship is a I don't know space weevil or something. <laughs> now the other thing you can do is you've got thrusters on your um, SLV, so you can jump around. That's quite good fun. Uh, if you find a nice bit here, like a like a jump, you can try and get some air. Do be careful that you can quite easily damage your SLV. <laughs> Um, so bear that in mind as well. I quite like jumping at full speed. Um, these things are a little bit hard to control actually sometimes at full throttle, but um, I quite I quite like flying them. But when you're out exploring, it's best. There we go. I just about lost it there. Yep. Yeah. It's probably a good idea not to be too reckless with your SRV because <laughs> they're quite easy to bust. Um, And um, yeah, it's easy. To, it's easy to break them. Is that my ship or is that somebody else's ship? Um, especially if the train. Now the train here is quite nice and flat and smooth, which is good. Um, and we usually have. Um, there, there are all sorts of fun things you can do if you can. Um, yeah, I tend to find higher higher gravity makes them easier to drive because they stick to the ground better. Um, but if um, and if you find a planet where there's some nice cliffs and things, you can do some cool jumps, and you can sometimes land on top of other ships okay now landing on top of other ships is quite good fun because if you can get on top of somebody else's ship they can fly you up into orbit and, and there's all sorts of fun malarkeys and things like that that we'll probably get up to actually on this expedition because it's just one of those things that you do um, so uh, pushing the game envelope a little bit to see what you can do with the SRV by putting the SRV on a ship and then 
flying the ship, flying up. That 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 can be quite good fun. So um, so all those sort of things are the things that we can do. So um, so yeah. So having an SRV very important. Making sure that you know how to use the SRV to go and get materials is quite a good thing as well. So all that stuff is is quite good. Uh, so bear that in mind, okay? Bear that in mind. And then um, you basically, if your ship hasn't taken off, obviously you can just fly back in. This bit I always find a bit awkward. Um, there we go, board ship, managed to get it right that time. Um, so it just allows you to kind of um, fly around and do various bits and pieces. If you drive a long way away from your ship, it will take off. Um, now the only thing to bear in mind there Oh yeah, so driving to a geezer, if we find geezer and things, is, um, that's good. Yes, and redocking your SRV does fix it, okay, so that's a useful thing. So if you're low on things, but your ship's nearby, don't worry, just drive back to your ship and get on board and it will fix itself. But if you drive a long way away from your ship, it will take off and effectively de-instance itself, okay? Which I assume is some sort of memory thing for the game. But bear in mind that in order to get your ship back, you have to be somewhere where it's flat enough for your ship to land itself okay if you're in really rugged terrain you'll find that when you summon your ship back it won't be able to land or at least quite often it gets stuck uh, and occasionally it will even destroy itself so <laughs> be careful okay it's where we are here is quite nice and flat okay so it's nice and easy to um, your ship to come back but if you're in a rugged area beware that the autopilot whatever it is that's flying your ship to bring it back um, isn't always able to land um, so bear that in mind as well Okay, so that's SRVs. Um, that allows you to gather resources. Now I showed you the synthesis in the SRV, but also over here. So um, as you can see, there's all sorts of things you can synthesize. Most of these are irrelevant to me at the moment because of um, I haven't got any weapons on my ship because it's an exploration ship. But I can synthesize an FSD injection, which I showed you before. And then, you know, four reasons. Um, if you stick some carbon, vanadium, and germanium into the frame shift drive, it gives me a bonus. Okay, and um, different bonuses. Uh, you know, there's three levels: basic, standard, and premium, which allows me to increase the range. So if I get stuck and I need to do a really big jump somewhere, um, I can use the frame shift injection synthesis to jump further. And I use the SRV to get all of these bits that you can see on the screen: the arsenic, germanium, carbon, etc. Um, some of them are much more common than others. Some of them take ages to find as well. You know, all those sorts of things. Um, you know, usual stuff. But it does allow me to um, enhance the jump capabilities of my ship um, and so on and so forth. I can also fix things. So if down here, you'll notice um, that limpets, I can synthesize my own limpets. Now, this is a bit weird because limpets can be synthesized from iron and nickel. Now, iron and nickel as materials take no space on your ship, okay? <laughs> But when you make a limpet out of them, it turns into one ton of limpets. <laughs> because <laughs> little things like that really don't make a lot of sense. But it, it works, OK? So you can re fill your hole up with things that you need to fix other things, if that makes sense, from synthesis. So it's quite a useful thing to be able to do, this crafting stuff. Um, and down here, you can see I can also fix my AF AFM refill. So you notice when I was doing my repairs that my auto field maintenance unit has used up maybe about 20% of its um, oh it turns into four tons of limpets does it okay so there we go um, I thought I only did one when's that was that does that change I hadn't realized that so yeah so as Frank Miner says E equals MC squared so we can convert energy into mass or stuff <laughs> things like that um, so um, but my my field maintenance units use some of its magic numbers okay so I can go and and I'll show you this now refill my AMFU okay and I use I've got 12 refills available so I click that and it will refill it okay and it takes a moment to do its magic and then boom okay synthesis is complete and you can see over there that my uh, auto field uh, it's gone up a bit okay so you can just replenish it which is quite nice so your ship, with a bit of work by driving around and doing stuff, can be made self-sufficient. Okay, can be made self-sufficient. Um, right. Okay, we'll take off. We're going to go to the Riot system. Okay, uh, which is where we're going to hopefully organise as much as possible for our mass hyperspace jump. Uh, so that's the plan. So Riot, which is a little bit back now. There we go. 
Uh, let's go there. It's 51 light years away. So it's just one jump for my ship, which is quite nice. But uh, your mileage will, will vary. OK. Um, and my son is just parked in front of me. So I'm just going to flash my lights at him because I can. Hello, Josh. <laughs> um, and we'll head for Riot. OK, we'll head for Riot. Oh, I've got something. I for, ah, see, this is something I need to bear in mind on my thing. I forgot to switch my auto field maintenance unit off. Um, so that's not a good thing to do. There we go. So double check your systems, okay, before you turn them off. <laughs> um, and prepare to fly. So I'm just going to have to wait for my shields to come back online. So yeah, so yeah, it's easy to make mistakes because there's a quite a lot of complicated systems in there, okay. So do bear that in mind. All right. So where is Zeons? Now, one thing you always find every single time, almost without exception, is when you take off from a planet, the next system, regardless of where you're going, where you are in the galaxy is always underneath the horizon and today is no exception <laughs> I don't that's one of those unspoken rules of ED that the planet the, the system where you want to go to is always uh, even left my landing gear down is always um, obscured by the planet okay <laughs> it's just one of those things um, so, um, so yeah crazy stuff right so we need to Super cruise a little bit to get the planet out of the way. So let's just gonna have a look at that. Where is it? Uh, did we get a review? Rear view. There we go. Um, super cruise out of the way. Maximum super cruise. And as the planet starts to recede, then we can alter course to get Riot into into space now actually did them um, somebody said the fleet carrier is going to appear here so yeah so a couple of fleet carriers have joined us we have the zero gravitas and the absolution have joined us here in the system so the main hyperspace jump is going to take place from Riot and I think we should just head for Ridquat again to sort of finish it off so uh, what I was planning to do is if we can get as many people into the instance as possible so for those of you who are not sure we're in the Drew Wager private group at the moment um, and we're going to rendezvous in the Riot system um, and we'll try and execute a, a decent hyperspace jump from there which, which is always a good way to start these expeditions most of these expeditions start off with trying to cram as many people in, into an instance as possible um, and uh, then doing a kind of mass hyperspace jump as well so uh, let's see what we can get now it would be good to rendezvous with one of the fleet carriers that's in the um, if there are any in the real system so we'll see if there are any there um, and then kind of organize it from there <laughs> right so this is the real system let's uh, let's have a look let's just throttle back for a moment who is here and where can we rendezvous so no fleet oh there's a fleet carrier <laughs> which is the the hard candy okay so that's there's a place we can go um, so let's head out there I think for the time being I don't know if there's anybody on the stream, um, but we'll head out to the hard candy fleet carrier for the time being. Don't fly through the sun. Oh, it's right close to the star. That's a bit weird. Okay. Don't forget to do the honk, of course. So bear that in mind. Uh, switch mode, of course. There we go. Eight orbit pod. It's not going to bother the entire thing there. Um, I don't know if the um, um, hard candy is part of the tour or not. It's, apparently, it's set to war, so we can land there. Um, if anybody who is on the tour and in the chat is bringing a fleet carrier into the real system let us know that as well because uh, we'll camp there um, 
Um, so, uh, so yeah, it'll help if you get a couple of in your wing to deal with the invites so you can just get on with the stream. So they, uh, that's okay. So I might say um, whether or not Commander Bograt and Dante can try and encourage other people into the instance as well. We'll see see what we can do with that. But if you're in the Drew Wager private group, you've got a good chance of, um, of getting in there. So let's see um, how that goes. Um, it depends a little bit, of course, where you are in the world. Uh, and and the and the magic of instancing, <laughs> which is always which is always which is always hard work. Um, in fact, all the way through the law tour, we've it's not been too bad. We just haven't seen that many people. Um, where in Rio to bring the carrier? Okay, well, um, I'm pretty happy wherever you'd like to bring it. Actually, so if you are bringing a carrier specifically into the tour. Um, why don't you park it around this nice, why don't you park it around Riot 2? Uh, that looks like quite an interesting place and there's nothing else there. Uh, it's a planet with rings. So um, while you're doing that, let us know how you're doing. Uh, 15 minutes for the absolution to arrive. Okay, so we will um, we'll wait for the absolution to arrive uh, in there. Uh, and if you can park it around Riot 2, then um, that's what that's where we'll go from because I don't know if they are oh, just flown past. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the hard candy is anybody who's here, so it might just be somebody who's flying around. And I've just selected real two, which was a mistake. So I'm just going to hang around for the hard candy for the moment, and then when one of the fleet carriers that is on the thing, um, if the fleet carrier owners could go to real two, that would be good. And then we could oh we could watch her jump in as well. Yeah, that would be good fun. Okay, so we'll try that. Um, that is very cool. Um, so give us a countdown for um, the absolution. That would be really good um, when we're on the stream. So these fleet carriers are going to make explosion quite a lot more interesting. I've noticed also there's a, um, a map of where all the fleet carriers are in the galaxy. I don't know quite know how it was generated, but uh, I saw it on Reddit. And uh, Josh, actually, my son, pointed it at me, uh, which is very cool. And they're they're all, they're everywhere, you know. They're at the Formidine Rift already. They are uh, over in um, distant worlds, Slimy's Reach, you know, um, all the different places, <laughs> you know, Sagittarius A Star, all those sort of places. You know, everywhere has got a fleet carrier already. Uh, and Wimbledon Common is coming as well. So, do we have to travel to Real Two and drop out of seats? Um, so, yeah. So, how do how do we know where the fleet carrier is going to arrive? I haven't seen one arrive yet, so I'm quite looking forward to seeing that. Um, so yeah, we'll try and, and try and do that. That would be quite a bit fun. Um, and then if we can congregate around one or other of those two ships, that would be quite good. So this is the hard candy. I don't know whose ship this is, um, but it's got very nice pink landing pads. So that's all good. So um, what I might do actually is I might just dock and sell some of my exploration data because I can show you um, oh, the fleet carrier will show us a contact so you can meet it to see it arrive. Ah, very cool. Okay, so let's just ask this one for. Um, let's just slow it down. Uh, yeah, let's just request docking. Docking pad 10. Ah, oh, let's put it on the side over there. Okay, will do. So I'm just going to dock for a moment. Because this is the final bit, okay? So if you've done some exploration. Um, then uh, you can um, I've done that silly lady I just like putting my landing gear down right at the last minute just to keep you on your toes there we go okay so uh, so here on the carrier services and you don't have to do it on the carrier um, I don't know if there's you get slightly less money or slightly more money um, but for doing it here but you can now do um, selling your exploration data on the carrier which is quite a nice thing to be able to do because um, it just allows you to, to do it whenever rather than having to race back to the bubble so if I had found anything new and exciting there um, I would have um, you know kind of cashed it in and got, and got the credit for it so that that's quite a good thing it, it does allow me to rearm Notice there's a there's a tariff here, <laughs> um, so I don't have to um, I don't have to do it if I don't want to. Oh, it's dropping me down into um, inside the ship to do that. Okay, 
Interesting. I didn't notice that. So it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a premium for some of these things, but there we go. Um, and a repair there as well. So etc. Cetera, et cetera. So there's 2,000 credits there. I think that's okay. Um, <laughs> um, and, oh, it's outfitting. That's what it is. See, these things are a bit weird. But anyway, there we go. So that's how you can do that sort of stuff. And I can refuel for 14 credits and repair there. There we go. So it's nice and easy. Uh, so let's just go back to the surface. I went to outfitting. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, so um, you get 25% less from a carrier. So bear that in mind. You will lose some money, and the carrier only gets some because you know they're running the carrier. They're operating the carrier. So uh, you can either wait till you get home or not, uh, and see how that kind of stuff goes. So it's entirely up to you. But there's less risk because the carrier is nearby. But you're going to get more money if you go all the way home. So <laughs> it's, it's 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 the economy. Okay. So all that sort of stuff. Right. So how is the um, uh, how is how are the um, ships doing? Okay, so let's head. So that kind of completes, I suppose, the exploration cycle. So you have all the components on your ship. You need a fuel scoop. You need a decent frame shift drive. You want all the synthesis stuff on there. You need the SRV. You need all the scanners. You have to use the scanners. Um, have to make sure you repair your ship, keep it in good shape, um, and that allows you to fly into the darkness. Okay, so that's all kind of good stuff. So let's head then for. Um, Uh, which one is it? Let's head for Realt 2, which actually looks like quite an interesting planet, actually. Um, little ringed, rocky world there. And uh, we'll see if we can see these fleet carriers arrive, which is going to be quite cool. So head to Realt 2, and we'll uh, see if we can. I haven't seen them, I've seen one go, but I haven't seen one arrive, so that's going to be quite good fun. Come on, get out of the range. It's quite big, these fleet carriers. It takes a while to get out of mass lot range. There we go. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, <laughs> um, 30 minutes for Wimbledon Common. Okay. And hopefully the other one is there as well. So, uh, do we can we see it on the contact tab? Is that how it works? So, I'm not seeing... Okay, I'm seeing my wing. Uh, nine minutes for Valiant, 11 minutes for Absolution. Okay, so a whole bunch of fleet carriers are coming in. This is quite a cool looking planet, actually. So uh, do we hang around in frame shift, actually, while we're waiting? Um, It'll show up five minutes before. Okay, so whichever one gets here first, we're going to use that one. I think I'm kind of hopeful. I, I love all the names. Absolution's a good name, um, and um, what was the other one? Valiant. That's a lovely name as well. But um, Wimbledon Common is <laughs> is a great one as well. So um, uh, which one is going to be first? And we'll 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 drop out there. Um, that's a nice. This is quite a nice planet actually. Um, oh, hang on. Josh is being into. <laughs> Josh is being interdicted by somebody. Um, <laughs> if he's all right. <laughs> Any problem with an exploration ship here is that um, <laughs> you're generally unarmed, so um, it's uh, it's not ideal. Oh, I didn't realise you could see the um, look at that. You can see the probes from Super Cruise. Uh, why, uh, are you okay there, Josh? <laughs> he just said, "Grr." <laughs> so you can see other people scanning the planet, which is quite cool. I hadn't realised. I haven't. Um, I haven't seen that happen before. That's quite good. Um, so yeah, so keep us keep us with the countdown, um, with the um, uh, with the um, the arrival of the uh, fleet carriers. Uh, not seeing anything here at the moment, but quite a few commanders about. So I'm assuming I have to stay in FSD though. Is that is that correct? Um, <laughs> wombles, yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, we're in a wing. So that's why I'm getting. <laughs> so you can work together to do the surface scanning. Okay, that's cool as well. I hadn't realised that either. Oh, that's good stuff. Uh, the visible and nav panel now. Right, okay. So we have got um, the zero gravitas, the valiant, the hard candy, which we went to see. Um, 
and some other stuff which I don't think is anything to do with so let's just can we filter just for fleet carriers is that an off or is that an on there we go okay so uh, the zero gravitas and the valiant okay so those are the two right so um, well given the zero gravitas is going to get here first we'll go for that one we'll go for that one um, okay so lock on to the zero gravitas who, who who's is the zero gravitas by the way Whoever's owning it in chat, do say hello. Um, and we will uh, we will gonna go head over there and watch this ship arrive out of um, out of um, uh, out of hyperspace. So that's quite cool as well. I've seen one go. I haven't seen one arrive. So this is a new one for me. So I'm quite looking forward to this. Uh, that should be quite good. And then what we'll do, we'll try and get as many people into an instance with the zero gravitas, and then if we can hyperspace out from there. So I think that would be quite good. And then that will mark the start of our trip. Okay, that will mark the start of our trip. So this this stream really has kind of been just a prep. Okay, right. So this is so I guess we just sort of hang around here, do we, and wait for it to? I want to be reasonably close. How close is safe? <laughs> Um, so I can see the the signal there is nine kilometers away. Uh, I can see Commander Bograt hanging around there, so I'm going to fly over to him and line up with him. He seems to know what he's doing. <laughs> two kilometers is safe. Okay, right. Let's let's go for two kilometers then. kilometers is going to be about well there we go we're not far away okay about there okay well probably a little bit too close let's back off a little bit slowly reverse away from that there we go right so we'll see that hopefully arrive in a little bit seeing my son reversing towards me there <laughs> um, and scratch my paintwork <laughs> um, so I hope it, yeah so um, it's very close and it's very cool okay well I'm looking forward to watching it then so I shouldn't really go for my external view at this point shouldn't I um, let's go for the full free camera as well um, and zoom back right out so we can see hide the UI and we'll watch the fleet carry arrive. So how far away is the um, This ought to be neat. So how far away is it? So if you can get in the instance with me, then please do um, <laughs> Very bright glowing anaconda doing its thing there um, Josh stop bashing my ship um, <laughs> We'll see how many people can join us um, I can't see the carriage. What planet are they arriving at? Um, we are, they are close to Riort 2. Uh, we're about three minutes away from the carrier arriving. So um, that's going to be good as well. Okay, so we've got a few other ships parked around us here. This is quite cool. So yeah, so if you can gather up. Now, we're now awaiting the arrival of, uh, of, of the ship. And some others are coming as well. So that's really good. So let's watch the... Um, the uh, fleet carriage. So this is obviously fleet carriers are quite a new thing for Elite Dangerous. Only just big, only just come out. Um, so people are still exploring what you can do with it. But they seem to be a pretty welcome addition to the game. Actually, I was a bit sceptical that it'd be a great deal of fun. But everyone seems to have embraced them, which I think is quite fun. Um, and having them along on expeditions is going to be quite a useful, um, quite a useful thing. Uh, so you should be able to find the capital ships on the nav panel. Um, as I understand it, so um, uh, and they yeah they do this sort of massive cloudy lightningy effect when they come in. Um, right, so lockdown is now in effect on the zero gravity. It's jumping in two minutes and twenty seconds, so uh, it should be ahead of us soon. So we're going to be waiting for it to arrive. Um, as you can see, we are um, not far away from um, Real Two. There's Real Two and its ring system in the background. So. Um, we will be 
appearing quite soon. If I can get my camera to stop rolling a little bit. I've got odd sort of dead zone in this view. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So anyway, there we go, settling down. <laughs> the Anaconda looks like a Christmas. Yeah, so these are some of the uh, lighty up things. Now, um, which ship you bring on this expedition is entirely up to you. So um, you don't need to have a ship with a massively long jump range, but for crossing the difficult bits later on, it's definitely worth having something that can do more than 40 light years, uh, which is pretty straightforward to do nowadays. Um, best base ships, I would say, are, if you can afford it, the Anaconda, because it's got the best jump range in the game, um, the at the cheap end, uh, the DBX Explorer is probably the best ship. Um, the ASP Explorer is extremely good as well. Um, and the middle range ship, which is really, really good also, is the Crate Phantom, which is the one that I'm using. So any of those are really, really good base ships to build an exploration ship on. Um, you need to go for lightweight components mostly. Uh, you want the best frame shift drive, obviously, uh, to give yourself the maximum distance. But you also want to carry all the... Um, SRV and all the scanning devices and all that sort of stuff as well. So well, we'll see how well this works. Well, we're now waiting. We've baited a breath. Um, yeah, the Dolphin and Orca, I've never tried them. I can't really recommend them, not because they're not necessarily any good, but um, uh, I've never tried them. So they're on my list of things to do. So, um, so yeah, so um, I recommend to be in cockpit view. Okay, so let's drop back. So there we go. Right, zero gravitas. We are still awaiting it. Um, uh, have we got a countdown for the timing? Okay, so two minutes that the absolution is going to arrive. Um, the zero gravitas is imminent. Um, um, so Great Phantom is actually third best jump range. Oh, is it? Okay, so that's really good. Um, the dolphin is great. Try scooping with it. <laughs> Not sure if that's good or bad. Um, after notification, you can get in the free camera. Okay, so how many, how far away are we now from the zero gravitas arriving? Yeah, engineer Cobra up to 50 light years. So that's pretty good. So the Cobra is, a, is still a good ship. So that's nice and cheap as well. Um, it's arriving in the Xbox instance. Interesting. Okay, no sign of it here yet. I've just got the proximity alarms on for the other ships, but. Um, put all my pips and shields for the moment then <laughs> so it's it's interesting it's arrived in some instances but not in others that's a bit weird isn't it <laughs> we haven't had it arrive here um, time and arrival show on the detail on the nav panel okay let's just have a quick look at that then okay uh, I don't see it telling us there We're not seeing it arrive. That's a bit weird. So it's here. <laughs> uh, I wonder if something's gone wrong. We're not. We're not seeing it arrive. There is. There's nothing there. Well, we're still streaming. Um, and we're still in the instance. There's nothing wrong with Elite from our perspective, but we <laughs> have no fleet carrier. <laughs> uh, so that's really weird. Uh, where, where's it gone? It's not telling us when it's supposed to be arriving or not. I think we've been diddled out of our arrival. That's very strange. So none of us who are in the instance with me have seen the ship arrive. <laughs> uh, so what's the guessing if we jump out and jump back? It will. Um, <laughs> it will. It will suddenly appear. So sorry about that, zero gravitas. You've you've, you've gone. Um, that's very odd. <laughs> so we might have to decamp to the absolution. Um, because it, now it's it's, well, it's supposed to be here, isn't it? But it is it simply isn't. 
just going to go over there. There's there's nothing there. How odd. I'm guessing that's a bug in the game because we've got the coordinates, but there's nothing here. Um, I can fly through the spot, and there's, <laughs> there's nothing there. Um, right. Well, in that case, we'll decamp to the absolution, which isn't too far away. Which is a shame because we won't be able to see it arrive because um, it's already there. But we'll decamp to the absolution uh, rather than break up our wing. Um, so um, there we go. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe we we'll have to file a bug report for them. Um, so now we'll, we'll jump across it. I'm, I'm sure it really is there, but maybe there's too many people. Maybe that's a maybe that's a problem. I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? So head for the absolution, folks. We're gonna we'll start over there. <laughs> we'll try and do a hyperspace jump from the absolution. That's a bit weird. Uh, maybe we maybe we found a an instancing bug. So let's see how many people we can get into the absolution instance, and we'll do our best there. So. Um, we'll try our hyperspace jump from there because we've got about 15 minutes or so to um, uh, yeah maybe it's a full instance so let's see what happens maybe we'll overload this one as well um, um, yeah I don't really want to relog because of course we'll lose our lose our wing we'll have to set that all up again but um, so we'll try and let's see how we're doing here the absolution is um, blue tunneling now. Well, there we go. Wow, I've got a fleet carrier. Excellent. There it is. <laughs> Welcome to the absolution. Uh, and I can see quite a few other commanders here as well, which is nice. Okay, so hang on. my ship's running really slowly because um, I didn't have any power in the engines. So, a slightly different variant of. Um, the carrier this one so are those sticky out bits things that you can buy or they're just different designs of fleet carriers that's that's quite cool um, or am I just underneath it looks like I might be underneath it yeah I am <laughs> I approached it upside down uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go for a little tour of the ship fly sideways around it So, there we go. The absolution here in the Riot system. Very nice, too. Oops. I got a crash into it. Uh, in orbit around, as you can see down there, um, Riot 2. Um, so, we've got quite a few people here, which is good. So, um, yeah, it's, it is a ship kit. Um, oh, Drew, you have a 10 second delay for the chat. Yes, I do need to bear that in mind. Apologies for that. Um, so let us try and get as many people in here as we can. So um, I don't know the best way of going about this, actually. So this isn't really my expertise. So tips on getting people into the um, instance uh, are welcome. But I don't really want to crash Frontier servers either. So <laughs> um, there, there is that. So what I would suggest we do, if we for, for those of us who are in the instance, form up at the back of the fleet carrier, um, just above the engines, and we'll kind of line up there for our for hyperspace run. Um, and then we need to lock on to the Ridquat system, which is where we're going to make our first inaugural expedition jump to. So that's going to be where we where we start off from. So these fleet carriers are huge, great big things, aren't they? Which is nice to see nice big assets in the game, actually, at that time. Um, so I'm going to sort of park up behind this fleet carrier. About sort of there, I think. That looks quite nice. Let's just shove off to the left a little bit so I can see it right in front of me. There we go, the absolution. Very nice. There we go. So so yeah, so people have to drop out of yours. So others, okay. So people in the instance need to drop wings to open slots. Okay. So if um, if you're already in the instance, right. So what I will do, um, I will 
drop my wings here. So um, Josh, Bograt and Dante, if you can just stay in this instance, I will drop my wing and see if I can invite people who are... So I apologize, I'm going to drop you out of my wing. Um, how do I drop the wing? <laughs> uh, options, there we go. Right, so I'm going to leave the wing and then invite some people who are not in this instance. Um, so could I have... Uh, just chuck me some names of people who are online in the Drew Wager private group, but who aren't in this instance, and I will try and invite you. Okay, we'll do that. So, the first three that come up, um, Andy Fireblade, right, let's see if I can find you. Uh, and we'll see if we can get you into the... Okay, I've got a pending friend request, so let's do that. Uh, right, so uh, is your commander name Andy Andy Fireblade? Can I see? <laughs> okay, I've got. Hang on, I've got a few people here inviting me into a wing. Right, let me let me try and get these. Okay, so loads, <laughs> loads of wing invites. Right, um, there's one. So I've got pending friend requests. Let's just see how many we can get in here. So if, if Josh, Bograt and Dante can keep inviting people in and those people can then um, jump in and jump out to try and um, get people into the wing. We'll just we'll just do as much of that as we can um, and, and see how it goes. Right, so where, where are my other wing invites disappeared to? The problem with this UI is it doesn't really help um, with this. So where do all those wing invites go to? Disappeared. Right, hang on, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to try the try and do this in order. Andy, I can't see you on this list. So um, I'm just jumping. I've got. Um, uh, I'll try Charlie. Charlie Alpha, I can see you. So I can't invite you to the wing for some reason. Um, so that doesn't work. Um, Trapper, Trapper Q. Let's try that one. So do the best you can, guys. Okay, <laughs> it is only for a bit of fun. But uh, T for Trapper. Let's see if I can see you on my list. I don't have you on my list. Um, if only we had servers, eh? If only we had servers. Ah, oh, hang on, Trapper Q. I do have. Oh, I did have you there for a moment. Uh, I can invite you to the wing. There we go. Try that. Um, um, freaky deaky. <laughs> that sounds very wrong. Uh, so well, I've got Trapper Q there. That's good. So uh, I can't see freaky deaky on there. Uh, people are trying to get into the instance. That's definitely working, but. Um, just try and invite as many people as you can. See how it goes. We'll try and do a jump at 10 o'clock UK time. Oh, I think I saw Freaky. There we go. For Freaky Deaky. There we go. Right. My wing is full again. So if you guys can get into the instance, please do. Please do. <laughs> Once somebody drops into the instance, they should drop the wing so more can get in. So, yeah. So there we go. Um... Lillian says, Drew, this has been a great stream. Not, not a new bit, but it's cool that you went through everything so you could prepare for everyone that's not been done before. So, yeah, the idea is just to make sure it's as inclusive as possible, right? So I know that many of you are hardened veterans who know a lot more about Elite than I do um, in, certain, in terms of the game mechanics and everything like that. So, you know, I bow to your, um, your uh, expertise on that sort of stuff. But um, sometimes it's worth just going back and looking at the basics so, as well. So... Um, some people on PS4, so yeah, so team up the best you can on the other platforms. We can't do cross uh, cross play yet, unfortunately, with Elite Dangerous. Um, so um, right, so I've got a space in my wing. Um, let's see if I can find Charlie H again. Um, ah, I've got Andy Fireblade. There we are. I've got you this time, Andy. So um, are you already in a wing? That doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, let's try again. Um, okay, so Trapper Q's in here. That's good. Um, so let's let's go down the list here. Um, plenty of people here. 
Tim Falcon. I've just seen that name in there, so I'm going to send one to there. So try that. Uh, and so once yeah, so once you're in the instance, drop the uh, drop your wing because you should stay here until we jump out. And we just want as many people as we can get in here as possible. Now this does stress the peer-to-peer -peer servers at Frontiers Inn, so. <laughs> I may get a little warning. Um, last time I did this, that uh, I just got a little a little nod from um, some of the frontier guys on Twitter saying, "Oi, don't do that again." <laughs> so, never mind. Um, read your messages or ever, ever, only ever read new friend requests. Okay. Um, oh, so this is this is the problem with this stuff. It's um, too much stuff to do. Right. So how are we doing? Yeah, I keep getting unreachable. Okay, that's a bit annoying. So, um, there's, there's quite a few people here actually, which is good. Um, I've got a space on my wing, so if anybody out there wants to send me a, a wing invite, then please do. Um, yeah, they'll never find out. Um, <laughs> Andy should be reachable now. Let me try again. I can't. So. So now it's not doing it in alphabetical order. This isn't helpful. There's Andy. Try again. There we go. Right, you've just had a wing invite, Andy. Can you get in? <laughs> All right, got four minutes. There's not as many people as we can get into the wing. <laughs> um, right, so we've got Andy, Tim, and Freaky. So they are there. So once you're in my instance, um, if you can drop out of the wing, that gives me a space to add somebody else in. So who else is next? Um, David Drew says it again. <laughs> um, so excellent, so that's good. Who else? Uh, chuck, a, chuck another name in and I'll see if you can find you. Um, so that's good. Um, how do we drop out? You basically go into options and leave wing. Um, av Avatry Zero. I'll see if I can find you. Uh, I can't see your name on that list, unfortunately. Um, Lance Lifson wants to throw an invite and commander. Uh, Lance, all right, let me see if I can find you. Lance, all there we go, I've got you. Right, you've got a wing invite. And SP4H, let's see if I can find you. I've got Sir Amiga there. And then it's doing weird stuff with them. Um, not doing things in alphabetical order, which is not helpful. Yeah, who was that doing bashing my ship? Uh, S oh, there we go. All right. No, I can't reach you, I'm afraid, SP4H. It's just saying unreachable in wing, which is annoying. I don't know what that means. Um, but there we go. <laughs> That's annoying. Um, I'll keep trying. C212. Don't see you there. C212. No. Don't see you there at all. I can see a few other people jumping in, so that's that's good news. Um, Commander Nine Plan. I'll see if I can find you. So this is the bit that <laughs> uh, not on my list. I don't know why where the names don't show up, but that's a bit frustrating as well. There's lots of people here, but um, is that Nine Nine Plan. There we go. Uh, invite to wing. Try that. That might be good. Um, <laughs> Uh, commanders have to be in the same PG as well. Yeah, so we are in the Drew Wager private group at the moment. Bear that in mind. Um, so Lance the Nine Plan, if you can find your way into the instance, that would be good. we've got quite a few ships here now. I don't know how many of the scanners showing up, but that looks like at least 10, 15, which is getting close to um, the limit, I think. I don't know how many, what's, what's the maximum people have done? Is it like 40 or 50 and then things really go odd? Um, <laughs> um, SB4H has relogged. Let me just try that one more time. I've still got the space there. Um, 
Yes, there we go. I've been. I think I've invited you to the wing. So, guys, jump into the wing um, if you can accept it. So, I. Yeah, SP4 has managed to get into the wing. So, yes, that's good. Jump on in. Um, it is actually time. It is time. 22 is stable enough. But it is time to do the jump. It is time to do the jump. So, wherever you are, be prepared, okay? So, let's log on to the jump. Um, we are going to be jumping here, very simply, to the RIDQUAT system where we started this evening. So lock your coordinates onto RIDQUAT. Let's find out which orientation it is. It's actually away from the fleet carrier. So I'm just going to turn my ship very gently around. Right, RIDQUAT is actually down there. <laughs> so if you can orientate your ship towards the RIDQUAT system. I've got an anaconda here very close to me, so I'm just going to back away gently. <laughs> For those of you who are in this instance, uh, and everybody else who isn't anyway, um, rotate your ship and align yourself with the Ridquat system. I'm just going to back away from this anaconda just a little bit. It's a little bit crowded here. <laughs> Alright, there we go. There's the Ridquat system. Okay. Now I'm aware that I've got a 10 second lag on the stream, okay? So um, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to say, um, go. <laughs> so what I suggest you do is, um, we'll charge up hyperspace drives, um, but not throttle up, okay? A last second invite chance from Tekaron. Let's just, I'll give you one last chance, here we go. Um, where are you, Tekaron? See if we can get in there. I can see you. There you go. Give that a whirl, just as we're lining up. So uh, orientate yourself towards Ridquat. Um, and uh, we will. that will be the inaugural jump. Now bear in mind, everyone's to go at a certain time. Okay, so the time here in the UK is... Uh, at the moment, two minutes past, oh, what, nearly three minutes past, uh, yeah, we will jump. We will jump at um, on the system clock. Okay, we will jump at the system clock. Um, now, the system clock currently on my stream says 21:03. Okay, literally just gone. We're 21:03. We will jump at 21:05. Okay, so at 21. Um, oh, we need to clear the fleet carrier. Okay, so let's just slowly travel forward. That's a very good point. Let's let's travel forward away from the fleet carrier um, until we get to uh, out of mass lock range. So jump to Ridquat at twenty one zero five on your system clock in the game. That's one minute from now. Um, but we need to be out of mass lock range of the fleet carrier so carry on forward you should be able to see my um, ship right I'm out of range so I'm holding position there um, we now have on my stream count we now have one minute to go okay so form up around me hyperspace jump to Ridquat stand by to engage at 2105 so I'm going to charge up hyperspace drive now don't throttle up so basically charge up your hyperspace drive but do not throttle up, okay? Do not throttle up. Charge your hyperspace drive, but do not throttle up. Throttle up is at 2105, okay? So my hyperspace drive is now charged, okay? So charge your hyperspace drive. We are 25 seconds from jump. 20 seconds. 15 seconds. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Jump! I love this bit. This is so awesome. <laughs> Whee! Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> 
Onwards we go! Onwards we go! This is the first jump of many. There we go, and we come out of space into the Ridquat system, and the and the wing disintegrates straight away, <laughs> and the instances is going. So that's awesome. Right. So just so you know where you're going. Um, we will be rendezvousing next week, so I need you next week to go to the, where is it? It's out here. Uh, where's my bookmarks? Uh, here. This is where we're heading next week. S171 um, 18 system. Somebody's already there, as you can see. It's 2,000 light years away. And um, it is the NGC 7822 Nebula. Um, but the system we're going to rendezvous in is S17118, so be there for next week. That's where we're going to be, all right? <laughs> I will look forward to seeing you, and I don't want to lose anybody along the way, okay? So fly safe. <laughs> it's going to be good fun. It's going to be good fun. So thank you very much for your company this evening. I hope you found that introduction to exploration interesting. We are now um, on the expedition. Um, and I will see you out in the uh, in the NGC Nebula um, next week. So have a great one. Be good. Look after yourselves. Fly safe, and enjoy the trip. Enjoy the expedition. We're now going where a few people have gone before, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good, um, guys. You have a fantastic uh, rest of the week. Uh, I'm back tomorrow with a little bit of Stellaris, so see you then. Um, and on Saturday I'm continuing my exploration of the original Elite on the ZX Spectrum, so uh, good to see you there. And obviously next week then we'll be back for more of this expedition into the Formidine Rift. So see you there. Be good, take care, and I will, uh, I will see you next Thursday. All the best, and right on, Commanders. 07.